Hey everyone, welcome to My Final Play. I'm Brian, I'm here with former professional women's baseball player, Salty Sands Ferguson. Salty, thanks for joining me today. No problem, I'm happy to have you here. So I am honored to be able to be here um, and hear some of these experiences that you've had, um, and more particularly, just the sport of baseball and the love of the game. Um, so I wanna get into you know the getting up to the point where you played on one of the um, professional women's baseball teams uh, that were only around for uh, 12 years back in the 40s and 50s. Um, but where did it all start for you into getting to that level? Uh, when I was four years old, my dad was an avid, avid baseball fan. Mm -hmm. He'd see baseball from here to Harrisburg, Sunbury, Williamsport, Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. And at four years old, he took me to my first game in Orangeville. Yeah. We had a very good men's team down there, and all I can say is I fell in love with the game of baseball, but anybody after that asked me, Salty, what are you going to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to play professional baseball, not even knowing that there was anything anywhere in the country for yeah. women. Uh, but I never gave up on that dream. It was always there, and anybody asked me, I'm going to play. The kids at school, as a senior in high school, I had to go to Bloom yep. High School because Orangeville, we could only go eight grades, and then I had to go to get my four other years. I had a choice between Bloomsburg and what is now Central Columbia High okay. School. I chose Bloom, I think, because my dad worked there. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, you know what, if I miss the bus, I can always catch a ride home with dad. Yeah. You know, I never did, but anyway, so I went to Bloomsburg High School, and then in our senior year, and all the kids are starting to say, Salty, what are you going to do when you graduate? Mm -hmm. They go with me. I said, I'm going to play professional baseball, not knowing, still not knowing yeah. anything. So there's no other answer for me than the good Lord upstairs. There was a man down at Life Now. His, his, it wasn't Paul, the young Paul Riker of today. He's the president of the fair okay. down at Bloomsbury. It was yeah. his uncle. Okay. And he owned an accident health insurance company. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was told one day to go down to the home of a Mr. Charles Schuler in Allentown, Pennsylvania. They were to have a meeting. They were both insurance men, yeah. had their own business. So he went down there and he said, Salty, when I went in that man's office, when I walked in there, he said, oh, I looked around and there was pictures of girls and signed baseball setting all over Immediately, my first question to him was, what is all this? Right. He said, I am a scout for the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League out in the Midwest, because Phil Wrigley had started it because they were drafting his men into the war. Mm -hmm. He was afraid that Major League Baseball, as he knew it, could die out if they kept drafting the men into the war. Right. So he said, there's nothing wrong with girls playing baseball as long as they look good when they do it, so hence the short skirts and everything. Yeah. Somebody said to me, Salty, how did you play in those? I said, either played in them or you went home, and I wasn't about to go home. I could tell you that <laughs> after I got there. So. Yeah. so that's how it all started. So a scout was in Allentown, PA. Yeah, Mr. Schuller, yeah. Allentown, Pennsylvania. So immediately when he said he was a scout, Mr. Reichert, my friend, said to him, I know a girl who can play there. Yeah. He said, fine. He got him out one of his professional cards, said, take this home and give it to she or her parents mm -hmm. and have them call me. So I'm sure I pestered my father until he made that. We didn't even have a phone in our home at the time. Yeah. Everybody has a phone today. We right. didn't have any. So he, I think Dad called from his place of employment. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Schuler and his wife invited us to their own private home down in Allentown the very next weekend. Yeah. Never forget, it was a clear blustery for all day, and we drove down. Mr. Schuler took his glove and a ball, and I took my glove and Dad. And we went to a park, not a baseball park, yeah. just a city park where they sat and feed squirrels or birds or whatever. Yeah. So I threw him five pitches. On the fifth pitch, he caught it. But he didn't return it to me, and he started walking toward my dad, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've done something wrong. I hadn't touched a bat. I had not run or anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was scared, you know. But he walked up to my dad, 
and he said to him, I'm sending her to the Rockford Peaches, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, but just because I'm sending her does not mean she's made it and mm -hmm. she has to prove herself when she gets there. Yeah. So I don't think my feet touched the ground from that point on. No. And coming home, we did not need to go into Bloomsburg to get to Orangeville, but my dad, his chest was about out to here, <laughs> and his buddy, Eddie Schuyler, mm -hmm. Uh, was the editor of the paper and the uh, sports guy. Okay, he, yeah. he edited the paper and then he was a sports editor. And of course my dad had to stop and tell Eddie, my daughter's going to play professional baseball, you know, and he was so proud. Yep. And so, forth, so. so how old were you at that time? Uh, I hadn't turned, let's see, I was 16. Yeah. Uh, and of course I'm going into my senior year of high school. Right. And that's why I said so that the next day when I got to school, I went to see the, the principal, Mr. J. Clayter Patterson, mm -hmm. and I said to him, if I get all my projects and work done that's necessary to graduate, mm -hmm. is it possible that I could leave school early to join my team for spring training? And he said, yes, you may, if you get all that work done. So, so I think I left in May, yeah. like the middle of May. So before graduation. And joined, yeah. yeah, before. My dad had to go up on, uh, up on the stage and get my diploma yeah. when I graduated. And he told everybody where I was and what I was doing, that I was out in Rockford and playing professional baseball. Oh, wow. And I said a lot of people pro probably thought he's lost his mind <laughs> because even I didn't know there was such a thing. Right. So the people back here did not know that. So you had this dream of playing professionally before you knew it was even an opportunity or that the league even existed. Yeah. And then by 16, after only throwing five pitches, had the opportunity to go try out. Right, right. But so, and it, I'm, I'm not a big Yankees fan. Yeah. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm, they called us the Yankee team of our league because Rockford had won four. Oh, Out wow. of 12 years, they had won four. Yeah. Of the titles. Oh wow! So we were known as the the Yankees, Yankees. of the era. I'm not real proud of that wow. but <laughs> because they almost ruined baseball. The Yankees, as far as I could tell. <laughs> um, so the experience then out there. Um, I know that we had talked as far as you know not being away from home up until that point. Right. Um, but to be just because of the love of the game, what was it like to be able to do that for? Uh, Two of the best, as I say, two of the best years of my life, other than having my two children after I got married. Yeah. But it was awesome. I mean, we played ball every day, seven days a week. We yeah. had games. Yeah. And on Sundays, double headers. Yeah. And, and there then, was 110 games a season, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, they kept us busy. Yeah. No doubt about it. Now, how far um, geographically, how far east and west did the, did the um, league cover? Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Okay, so it was four really states. Just, it was a league that, that went in between there. Right, and that was pretty central to um, where Mr. Wrigley had started it originally. Right, right. He had started the Chicago, he owned the Chicago Cubs. Right. And uh, yes, so he knew all about this. He's um, the one that started it. Unreal. So, um, what would you say would be one of your best memories from an in game experience? Oh, I don't know. One time there was a girl on first. Ball hit out to me. Picked the ball up. She went to second, passed second, and headed for third. I threw a perfect strike, cut her down. Yeah. And it, they didn't score that game at all. So, it was so safe And to it out. was early in when I had started to play. Yeah. You know, of course we had other, you know, experiences and so forth. Um, so, well, I guess we can go back then a little bit too. So you had the opportunity to go out and try out, um, and in your mind, it wasn't even a question. Um, you were no, going to do I, it. I, I, um, yes, but I mean, when if he hadn't come up to me and said, "I'm sending it out," yeah, you know, I'd have been pretty disappointed. Um, but when, once you were there, when did you realize that you had earned a spot at that point? Well, uh, I did. I got to play quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah. A rookie, you know, and uh, that was my manager that, that put me in, and and if I couldn't catch, that was my first love was catching. Mm -hmm. 
but he put me out in the right field. I didn't care where he put me as long as I got to play. That's right. the important thing. That's what you went to do. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, uh, as Dad said to him, you can put her anywhere. She can, she can, she play. can play anywhere yeah. you put her because I practiced with the men's team all that time. And, yeah. You know. Um, so as far as then you and I know you had said it before, but the the number of putouts that you had from right field, it was how many? I don't know, twenty seven, twenty four, yeah. something like that. And I didn't think anything about it. Yeah. And somebody said after, you know, I handed somebody a card or something one day, and I thought, what's that? I was just doing the job. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize there was anything attached to it. Yeah. And then somebody told me that I forget who it was. I don't know, it was a center fielder at Pittsburgh or who it was. They had set a record uh -huh. out in the outfield of, yeah. of uh, assists. Mm -hmm. So, and I was never a big hitter. I was always known for my defensive skills. I, I was not a good hitter, but I believe had we had more time, I believe Johnny Rawlings could have taught me to be a good hitter. Yeah. When you look at my card, when you see the first year, I stuck out, struck out 49 times, mm -hmm. the next year, nine. Oh, wow. Mostly singles the first year. The next year, had a double, what was it, a triple, and a home run, one home run, and everybody asked me about it. Did you, kids all say when you talk, did yeah. you ever have a home run? I said, yes. I, I think it was a very windy day, <laughs> and I got the ball up in the air, and the wind carried it over the fence for me. <laughs> but it's on the scorecard. As I said it looks good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really great. Um, and then as far as um, you know, your final play, I know that we had talked in that you uh, don't exactly remember the final play mm -hmm. because it was the, the finishing of the 1954 season. Um, but you had already, going into that season, or toward the end of that season, had heard rumors of there potentially not being a 55 right. league, right. or 55 year season, right. um, which there ended up in 1955, it was canceled. Yeah. Um, but what was that like? Um, it, towards the end of that season, when you guys had that in the back of your mind, mm -hmm. um, and then actually hearing it then? Well, it didn't, didn't make any difference as long as we were playing. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, when you come home and you had to wait to hear mm -hmm. whether there was going to be another season or not. Right. And when I heard it, it was like a death in the family for me. Oh my gosh, no more baseball. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. You know? And that came by mail. No. Well, I think yes, I think it did. They sent us a, an official letter to the secretary of the Rockford team. Yeah. Now were you back home in between the seasons then? Oh yeah. 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 So you came home in between seasons. I came so. home, my dad got me a job at the I worked at the state capitol in Harrisburg. Okay. And uh, of course I didn't nineteen I didn't have any politics. I didn't care about that. But then <laughs> while I was there, politics changed. Mm -hmm. So I said to the lady I worked with, I'm gonna look for another job and she said, Oh Salty Dome, I know that keep you she said one girl had already got her pink slip. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to let them give me a pink slip. And she said, no, I know they'll keep you. She said, I've been here 20 years, no matter who's been in. Mm -hmm. you know, they'll keep you. And I said, no. So the fellow I was going with at the time worked at the Olmstead Air Force Base down in Middletown. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, why don't you come down and take a federal civil service test? You can work for the federal government. Yeah. So I went down, passed the test. They wanted me to come to work right away down there. And I said, no, nope, I'm sorry, that's not the way it works. I said, I have a job up in Harrisburg, and I have to go back, and I have to give them two weeks' notice, because I said, you don't walk away from a job like that, because you never know when you might need another one. Yep. You don't want to leave a bad taste in your mouth. So I went back and gave them two weeks' notice, and then I moved down there. And when I got down there, I found out that they had a summer professional girls basketball team, and I loved basketball too. I loved any sport. Yeah. Play, you know. And uh, so I was able to join the team and play professional, semi professional. We played like Anvil College and Bell Telephone from up in Harrisburg. And, yeah. And they managed to get games and so forth. And that was the two. And one day I was, I was there, we were. Uh, warming up and I looked and I thought, you know, that girl over there looks pretty familiar to me. Here it was a girl I played ball against out in the league. Yeah. She was from out at Anvil. And she and played she, on that pro, and she semi -pro played basketball semi -pro team. Semi-pro basketball team. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. I bet that made everything seem really small. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, how many years did you play on that semi-pro team then? Just, just one. One season then? Because then I met the man that was to be my husband, and he was clear out near Philadelphia, and I was back near Harrisburg, yeah. and it was too far away, so I transferred to the U.S. Naval Air Development Center at Johnsville. Okay. They have a centrifuge, you know what that is? Uh-huh. Okay, so... Um, I worked there, I went as a timekeeper, but then they did away with the timekeepers, and they got me a job uh, in, oh, I, I was a, I typed things for the people that got everything for the whole base, uh -huh. the procurement department. Right. Then there was an opening over at the uh, security department, mm -hmm. over where the Marines left everybody in. And so I put in for that. And I got that. I had to have a top secret security clearance. And I had the honor of meeting all the original seven astronauts. Oh my. That's why they brought them there to put them in the centrifuge. Yeah. Whirled them around to see. And there's little windows in there, and they left me go over one day. Yeah. And watched while they put a guy in there. He was fine when they first started out, you know, just whirling around a little bit. But the faster they go, you could just see that's what they wanted to know. Right. How many G's of force he could stand before he grayed out. So I got to see all of them. And uh, you know, you're young, didn't think about getting their signature. Well, we had it on all the things, but they belonged to the government. I didn't dare have any of them. So. But if I'd go back, I would, if I would have been, you know, had it up here. Yeah. Got their signatures. Um, now, as far as the sport of baseball, though, um, you know, being that you had that final play and you got that letter, um, what would you say would be the number one thing that this sport has taught you? Oh man, it, it teaches you really so many things. Discipline, yeah. you know, and, and uh, just you have to learn to get along with any kind of people that you know you come in contact with. Yeah. And, and if you're going to play ball, you play ball. Right. You know? You not know? do it for the stats, not do, not do it, it for no, the money, no, just do just it for the do love. It for the love. Yeah. What you're doing. And and that's all thanks to your dad yeah. at four yeah. years old. That's right. Unreal. It was a, certainly a love. I love the game. I still love the game. I sat there and watched the Pirates, Phillies, whoever's on. Those two, I, it's like football. I, I love football yeah. almost as much as I love baseball. Not quite. But, <laughs> so I, the Steelers and the Eagles, of course, I root for both of them. Too. Yeah. But I love football too. I've always loved football. Dad and I used to go together. He'd take me down to Bloomsburg University to college. We'd yeah. go to basketball games, football games. Huh. So sports have definitely been a huge part oh, of your life. Oh, yeah. We're a big part yeah. of And uh, somebody asked me, Did, was your husband a sports fan? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and then I guess... Um, trying to think uh, so the movie A League of Their Own um, you great ended up movie. were yeah, yeah, great movie definitely on um, I don't know anyone who wouldn't put it on their top five list of yes. baseball movies of all time um, but what was it like being part of that movie oh that's it you know I, I've told different people if somebody would have told me as a young kid uh -huh. that someday your name's going to be in the baseball hall of fame yeah or you're going to be in a movie, I would have thought they was losing it, you know. Yeah. They was losing it. I never in my wildest dreams, but when the letter came about the movie, I was driving school bus. I drove school bus for 45 years. Okay. And so I took my letter and I went to my boss at the bus garage. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, um, here, read this. Can you do without me for nine days? I can, I can go well. At first, we went out to, uh, oh, let me think now, but I forget sometimes. I went out in the summer, we went out to, and all the girls that were there that played in the movie. Mm -hmm. Now, I never met Tom Hanks and Gina Davis, mm -hmm. but all the other players that played in the movie were there. Okay. And we were allowed to go out. I took my niece, my daughter, and my uh, niece and her daughter. In Skokie, Illinois, okay. we went to. Okay, and Madonna was there, and who else? Well, whoever played the movie, the girl that had a TV show. Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. They were all there. And the guy, 
had his camera and he would say to these girls that played the parts, uh -huh. uh, if you see someone that looks like you, go get them, bring them over to camera, I'll take your picture and see the likeness, because what they were going to do was use us older ball players, mm -hmm. like going into that reunion up at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. They were gonna use us. And so this girl, I couldn't tell you who it was, some girl come over and got me, and we went over and stood in front of the camera, and the guy said, oh, never work, he said. She was a whole head taller than I was. So then this, the Screen Actors Guild come along and said, no, you can't do that. You have to use professional actresses. They couldn't use us. Okay. They had to use professional. But then when the movie, then I got a second letter from Columbia Pictures mm -hmm. and said, if you could be in Cooperstown, New York for nine days, you may be a part of the movie, a league of their own. So I forget how many of us were up there. But we filmed for nine or ten days. We yeah. had to be up there. And Penny Marshall, she was she was really nice. She, I'll never forget, I tell people this incident, she came. We were outside the ballpark mm -hmm. in the parking lot. A helicopter come in, sat down. Pretty soon Penny got off. She came over and she looked like she hadn't combed her hair in two weeks. Somebody said to her, Penny, instead of making movies and directing movies, when are you going to be in one? Because she was Laverne on Laverne and Shirley yeah. years before. She said, I'm never going to be in a movie again because she said if I was, I'd have to comb my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and we walked uptown like we'd known each other all our life. And yeah. Chatted with her and so forth. She was very nice. Okay. Very nice. And they allowed us. And in the movie, when it came out, um, we were shown, when the movie first came out, we were coming down the escalator, me and another one or two other ball players were coming down the escalator to when they stick that ribbon to go in the room. Mm -hmm. But um, when Penny made the first movie that came out, she showed people going up the escalator, but she didn't show us coming down. But then in the course of the movie, the whole movie, I was in it like on the screen myself two two or three times. Yeah. And uh, so my friends, of course, they timed me. They said I had eight seconds of pain. There you go. So it, our names were never in the movie. Mm -hmm. They never put our names in, but um, at the end of the movie, the credits rolled, and then you saw Dot and Kit trying to outwalk each other at, up the lane at the back at the farm. Yep. And then a woman started, uh, uh, yeah, she threw the ball. Mm -hmm. Somebody hit the ball. I'm out in left field, catch the ball. Yep. Uh, throw it into the shortstop. Yeah. And then in the next scene, they put between the catcher and the batter, and I'm up near the dugout, and I walk across and lean on a bat. And some of my friends said, well, you had eight seconds of fame. Anyway. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so that's so cool to be a part of it. And yes. to even have the film made after, um, you know, yes. what you all had accomplished, because it was only um, almost 600 yeah, total. Right, 643 uh, women okay. played in the league. Yeah. Now, uh, not too long ago, at one of our reunions, our baseball reunion, they told that there's less than 100 of us left. There's about 77 people out. I'm one of the young ones, I'll be 84. Yeah. But most of the women were older. Mm -hmm. They started in 43. Right. We only had one girl that played every year from 43 to 54. Oh, wow. Yeah. She was good, too. She was a shortstop. My dad, he knew he's baseball. When he came out and see her play, he said, Soldy, she's one of the slickest shortstop I've seen, man or woman, yeah. to play the game. Oh, man. She was really, really good. She was a nice looking girl, too. It's such a cool era of baseball to be able to have both leagues at the same time. Yes. Um, yes. That would have been really cool to see. So. And I'm sure a great thing to experience. Oh, so. yeah. That's uh, so I said when that girl along the street said to me, boy, I'll bet you're sorry you did that. Like, Hello? <laughs> you know, but people must not have dreams today. Because <laughs> I know several guys or girls getting out of high school, they don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. But I had this from the time I was four. You were determined. We left that ballpark. I said, man, I'm going to be a baseball player professional baseball player. Yeah. You know? Unreal. So. Yeah. All right. So. Well, um, I hope everyone liked and enjoyed the content. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe below. And remember, whatever it is that you do today, approach it with the mindset 
of Is This My Final Play? Thanks again.